uh, will be the gentleman from Connecticut, Mr. Courtney. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Mr. Secretary. It's very exciting to see you here today as one of our former colleagues. Uh, congratulations uh, on your confirmation and also congratulations on your great work as Attorney General uh, in California. You, again, were one of the AGs that stepped forward to defend the Affordable Care Act and with passage of the American Rescue Plan, which uh, we've now already seen in a very short space of time that over well over a million new Americans are now enrolled in qualified health plans, as well as uh, there's an expansion on the Medicaid side. Um, so your work was not in vain. It was really critical to, to stand up um, in the ACA's hour of, of need. I also uh, wanna thank you for your great work in terms of protecting uh, defrauded student borrowers. Um, the news yesterday that uh, Secretary uh, Cardona, who hails from the state of Connecticut, uh, was finally going to uh, discharge the debt of defrauded student borrowers from ITT Tech. That's about 72,000 borrowers across the country who got totally ripped off uh, by that institution in the last administration. I mean, just disgracefully was um, refusing to provide relief uh, for those students. Uh, again, there's as, uh, as Congresswoman Hayes can attest there's well over about 1,000, 2,000 kids in Connecticut that are gonna get relief from that order. So again, um, your work as AG uh, was not in vain. Mr. Secretary, I wanted to focus for a minute on a COVID um, policy, which HHS uh, adopted, uh, which I support, which is that they um, basically suspended the three-day hospitalization rule uh, for Medicare patients to get coverage upon discharge from hospital. Um, this has been a persistent problem over the years in terms of the way uh, hospitals were coding uh, patients as uh, outpatient as opposed to inpatient. And uh, we just had horror stories over the years of uh, elderly patients with broken hips, uh, ribs, uh, who in some instances were in hospital for five, six, seven, sometimes 12 days, uh, and then found out that they did not qualify for uh, follow-on rehab care uh, for their injuries because of the way they were coded as uh, observation status, not inpatient. Uh, again, HHS suspended that rule during the pandemic, which I think was a smart move. And, um, you know, I would like to at least flag this issue. There is a bipartisan bill, H.R. 3650. It is supported by over 30 geriatric um, uh, groups, including ARP, um, the Committee to Save, uh, to save uh, Social Security and Medicare, and many provider groups like the ER docs uh, and others um, to, to really um, get rid of this surprise billing on steroids, because that really is what happens to patients when they, uh, again, find out that they were coded in the wrong uh, bucket and, and uh, lose this coverage. I, again, it's a very specific issue. I don't want to put you on the spot this minute, but I want to flag it for you that, um, you know, as the uh, emergency order um, sunsets, that um, the system the system's going to snap back to where it was before. And we want to work with the department to either enact uh, 3650 or get some policy. And I, I don't know whether you just want to react and, and comment. I do have one other uh, question. Uh, uh, Congressman, first, uh, great to see you again. And absolutely, I'm aware of this. Uh, look forward to working with you. Uh, you understand that this is in statute. We have some constraints in what we can do, but we are absolutely willing to work with you. President Biden is committed to expand access to care, not reduce it. So we definitely look forward to working with you. Well, thank you, and you're right. I mean, we, we do need to, to move forward uh, by law, but the good news is we now have some data uh, during the pandemic to show that maybe some of the cost issues that have uh, raised concerns in the past really, um, in some ways, allowing people to get the care that's medically prescribed that actually reduces um, hospital readmissions. Um, and again, just really quickly on, on HR3, I just would note that that bill, uh, the savings that it accumulates, which you mentioned, a big portion of that is actually getting invested in the National Institute of Health. Uh, the bill also totally protects and preserves the R&D tax credit, which uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, like Pfizer um, you know, utilize uh, and, and Moderna utilize. So, um, you know, we are leaving a framework that it still encourages uh, investment in, in R&D. And I think, frankly, the collaboration of Congress in the CARES Act, other COVID bills and the rescue plan, working with the private sector is a great success story. But frankly, the taxpayers and patients should not have to bear the brunt of unacceptable prices for medications like insulin that have been off patent for decades. 
Uh, I agree with you, Congressman, and we're definitely looking forward to working with the, you and your colleagues to get something done to reduce the cost of prescription medication. Thank you. I look forward to it again. Congratulations. Uh, it's Thank great you. to see you. Great to see you as well. Thank you, gentlemen. Yes, back. The next, um, I see on the um, minority side is a gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Wahlberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, Secretary Becerra, welcome back to the People's